Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Today I am doing another recommendations video. You, my top five enemy to lovers romances. Um, this trope is very special to me because this is how my husband and I got together. We did not like each other at first. We, story time, story time. So my husband and I worked at the same restaurant together for seven years. Um, I met him when I was actually in my senior year of high school and I was a hostess at the time and he was a cook. I went back in the kitchen and introduced myself to him and he didn't talk to me. So um, fast forward about a year and a half later, I graduated, got my braces off and all that good stuff. And the restaurant that I was working at ended up closing, but they had another location at but they had another restaurant in another location, so I got transferred over there, and I was a server at that time. I moved up to the servant, the servant world. So he was there, and he spoke to me that time, but he was very cocky, and he was annoying, and I did not like him, and he didn't like me, and we just da -da 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 -da, constantly back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But then one day he grew on me, and we started hanging out. And we became friends, and then we started going on dates, and then finally we just started dating, and we've we've been together ever since. This trope is one of my absolute favorites because I can relate to it, and I know that it does actually happen. And, you know, so it's just, I wanted to recommend you my favorite romance trope. These books are, so, are not solely focused on just the steamy aspect of romance. These books actually focus on, like, individuality issues, letting people in, letting people know the real you. So, it's not solely focused on steamy. Now, some of these books do have steamy scenes in them because they are romance. But again, they're not just solely focused on the steamy aspect of it. So, we're going to get into the books. But first, if you have not already, please go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. Why do I always say Dutton? But hit that red subscribe button down below. Like this video, comment. Let me know what your favorite enemies to love romance is and I will check it out. And now we're just going to get into the video and my hair keeps sticking to my lip gloss. That's why I don't wear a lip gloss. The first recommendation I have for you is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. And this is a contemporary romance that is in first person point of view. Sorry, my dog just hit my camera stand and that's why it wiggled. But anyways, this book is about two characters named Lucy and Josh and they both work in the same publishing company. They have worked together for a while. They can't stand each other. They constantly bicker back and forth. The dialogue and banter in this book is super super funny. But one day a promotion comes up that they both wanted for a long time. They want to move up in the publishing world and they both apply for this promotion and their boss gives them a little competition towards each other. They both have to compete Ouch. sorry they both have to compete for the promotion and prove to their boss that they can handle the promotion and everything and that just makes their relationship even worse going back and forth but one day Something happens and Josh isn't as rude and demeaning as he has been towards Lucy and they kind of spark up a little relationship but Lucy doesn't know if it's real or not because Josh has always been rude and then all of a sudden Josh is being nice so she doesn't know if it's actually him wanting a friendship with her or if he's just trying to be nice to kind of lead her on a little bit and make her put her guard down for the actual job. This book is hilarious. Again, it's not solely focused on the steamy part of the two relation or of the two characters. It does have a some steamy scenes in it, but it is more of a enemies to lovers based romance that does not just solely focus on the steamy the steaminess. This is this book made me laugh and I always recommend this book when people ask me for enemies to lovers recommendations. So I'm recommending it to you. If you have not read it, pick it up. It's funny. 
The next book I have for you is Well Met, and this is by Jenna DeLuca. This is a chick lit contemporary romance that is written in first person. We read from Emily's point of view. She is our main character. Emily is kind of in a rut in her life and she doesn't know what she wants to do. She has just gotten out of a relationship that she wasn't happy in. Um, at this time, her sister does end up getting into a really bad car accident where it leaves her disabled for a little bit. She has to relearn how to walk and all that kind of stuff. So Emily decides that she's going to move to Willow Creek to help her sister out. When she gets there, her teenage niece wants to join the Renaissance Festival that her high school holds every year, but she has to have a parent or a guardian sign up with her. So Emily says that she's going to do this and she's going to help her niece out. Emily doesn't really take this seriously. She just thinks that it's kind of like, you know, just this nerdy thing that's going on and she doesn't, like I said, she doesn't take it seriously. She jokes way too much about it. Um, and when she goes to sign up, she meets this guy named Simon, and Simon is over the entire Renaissance Festival. He is also a teacher at the high school, so he has a lot of pull, and he has a lot of say-so on how the festival is ran every year. Emily meets Simon. Simon says some things to her that he probably shouldn't, because she doesn't take the festival all the way serious. Emily says some things that she probably shouldn't say back so there is banter back and forth but when the actual Renaissance Festival happens Emily is selected to be a bar wench so she's she's working the bar and she sees Simon for the first time in his pirate's costume. It's a completely different attitude. There's a completely different light about him and he's playful and he's joking around with people and she just kind of when she sees that part of him or that side of him she kind of starts to fall for him a little bit but this is more about individuals coming together and dropping their guard enough so somebody else can get to know them there is a lot of banter it is kind of a I would say it's, it's kind of like a slow burn a little bit but both of the characters have had bad things happen to them in the past, so that's why they don't let people in. Emily takes it on as joking, where Simon is just kind of brooding. He's a very brooding character. But they both have their reasons why. And this book made me want to go to a Renaissance Festival so bad. It was just one of those that I was just like, like it just made it, I smiled through the entire thing. It just made me happy. So if you like a cute, contemporary romance that isn't solely just based on the steamy part. Again, you will love this. If you like humor, you will love it. So if you have not read this yet, I would I would recommend to pick it up. My next recommendation for you is my Oxford year and this is by Julia Whelan. This is a contemporary coming of age chick lit romance. But it also has a forbidden romance element to it as well because it's about a teacher and student. But Anyways, this is about a 24-year-old American girl who wins the Rhodes Scholarship to go to Oxford for a full year on a scholarship. And when she gets there, she is super excited because this is what her life, like this is her lifelong dream, is to just go to Oxford and study for a year. When she gets there, she is recommended to go to this famous pub. Can't remember the pub's name off the top of my head, but when she gets to the pub, she orders the famous fish and chips. And when she gets her order, she's really not paying attention to where she's going, and bam, she runs into this guy. And this guy name, this guy's name is Jamie Davenport. And Jamie Davenport is a cocky douchebag that doesn't say sorry for running into her. Basically, blames the whole entire situation on her, even though she's the one that got the ruined shirt. But fast forwarding to that, that's like her first real encounter that she's had with anybody so she's just kind of like are all people like this like are all people this rude but going to her first class lo and behold who walks in Jamie Jamie is her English professor so she automatically thinks that she is not going to do well in this class because he is her teacher and he's just a jerk and she doesn't like him and all that kind of stuff and she gets her first assignment her first assignment he's not happy with so he wants her to meet him outside of school to talk about the assignment that she has and when they get to this bar 
they order drinks and they start talking about our assignment and they kind of drop the they kind of drop the walls a little bit and they start to talk about things and they realize that they agree on a lot of things. Her attitude towards him has changed a little bit. She kind of drops that, well, you're a jerk thing and she kind of brings it down a little bit. But Jamie is harboring a secret from his family, from his friends, from everybody. And when Ella finds out about the secret, that's when their relationship really starts to form. That's when the relationship really starts to open up. And they, in my opinion, they form a really good relationship. Now, some people will argue that Ella just gives up everything for him, but I don't think that she does. So, it is a serious novel. It does have some humor in it, but it is about Ella's journey on growing up. And it's also about Jamie's journey letting people come into his life and letting people actually help him for once. So if you like that kind of story, that synopsis or description was a little bit all over the place, but if you like that kind of story, I highly recommend My Oxford Year by Julia Whalen. The next book that I have for you is my favorite all-time book by Brittany C. Cherry, and this is called The Gravity of Us. This is a young adult contemporary romance that is written in first person. We read from Lucy's perspective. Lucy is our main character and Lucy has had a terrible past. There are two trigger warnings in here, child abuse and also sexual assault. So if you get triggered by that, just warning you that that is in here. But Lucy is basically running from her past. She's just getting away from everything. She moves to this new town and she ends up being neighbors to this guy named Graham. And Graham has a stone cold heart. He doesn't like people. When he talks to people, he's just rude to them. He doesn't want people to mess with him. He wants people to leave them alone. And that includes Lucy as well. But since they are neighbors, Lucy tries to talk to him and Lucy tries to, you know, form a relationship with him. At the beginning, Graham is very standoffish and he's just, he's a jerk. He's a douchebag to her. And he doesn't want her to know the real him and she's just she's not pushy but she is very intrigued by him not just based on looks but because she wants to she wants to find out why he is so stone cold and why he doesn't want people to get to know him so finally the barriers come down and all the secrets come out and they just really help each other through everything they really form this relationship that it, it does seem kind of fast but this is over quite a bit of time but it's just it's so pretty like Brittany C. Cherry can do no wrong she really can't this is this is the novel that I recommend to everybody if they want to get into contemporary romance because it doesn't solely focus just on the steaminess but it has a lot of character development and you see these two characters just come together and it's a strong bond. It's not just like a, ooh, he's hot, let's, let's do this. It's a like internal bond between the two characters and I really, really, really love this book. If you haven't read it yet, you really need to. The next book that I have for you is A Wish for Us by Tilly Cole. And this is a new adult contemporary romance and it is written in first person. We read from Bonnie's perspective. This is about two characters named Bonnie and Cromwell. Cromwell is a 19 year old music prodigy that's from England, but he moves to South Carolina for specific reasons that I'm not going to tell you because it's going to spoil it, but do know that he does move because, it's because of something. But when he gets to South Carolina, he decides to be a DJ, so that's what he's doing plus going to school, even though he doesn't want to go to school. but. Bonnie is a character who is very, very driven within the music world. Music is her life. Music is what makes her continue to go on. And her and Cromwell end up in the same music class together. The teacher pairs them together and they have to create a, a big project for the end of the year. But Cromwell is not doing what he's supposed to be doing. Bonnie tries to make him do it and they're they just go back and forth at each other. Like they just constantly go back and forth. He doesn't want to do anything. She has to do everything. But she doesn't want to have to do everything. 
and it's just one of those novels that like literally they're enemies but something happens to where they come together and they come together through music and she makes a breakthrough with Cromwell and he finally just breaks all or all his walls just fall down and they just come together it's a beautiful relationship after she basically saves him he has to turn around and save her because she has a secret that she's keeping for everybody as well and he finds out about it so it's a beautiful beautiful story if you are a music lover and you're a romance lover you really need to pick this up because it is so pretty Tilly Cole writes some really good dark romances but she can also write the heck out of some contemporary romance like this kind of contemporary romance and it's just she's another she's another one of those authors that if she writes something I'm gonna read it so yeah if you haven't read this you really need to so those are my five enemies to lovers romance books for you if you haven't checked any of these books out you really need to because they are great I love them they've been on my shelf for a while as you can see some of these are a little bit older but they are well worth it you really need to check these out if you have not already and remember please make sure that you subscribe comment below like this video tell me what enemies to lovers books you love and i will see you on the next one bye guys